turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. The faith chapter, chapter 11 of Hebrews. Years ago, I started visiting a lady. The lady had cancer. Trudy, you know who I'm talking about. Miss Daphne Phillips. And I started visiting her and met her and she was a just a fine Christian woman she had suffered from cancer for two years and uh, I just fell in love with her I mean she had such love for Jesus she had such a uh, a great outlook even though she was dying with cancer. One day I went by to see her, and she was all, oh, she was so down. She was, I'd never seen her like that. And I could tell she was crying, had been crying. And I said, Miss Daphne, what's wrong? And then she started crying. It seems like just before I came, she had been visited by two ladies from a, a local church. And they had told her that the reason she was not healed was because she did not have faith. Can't tell you the emotions that filled my heart, uh, my being, when she said that. They told her that because she wore a ring, and a necklace that uh, she was sinning and, that, and God would not heal her. And that, beloved, has stuck with me all these years. And I'm going to try and make you all understand today the wonders of faith. The wonders of faith. We're going to talk about faith. Faith in God, the wonders of faith. Look with me in Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start reading with verse 32. And we're going to read to the end of the chapter. And the Bible says, And what shall I more say? For time would, fa would, would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of, of the aliens, Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown, sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report, notice these next two words, through faith, received not the promise. God having provided something better than uh, some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you today for each and every soul that's here. God, we love each one. Father, we desire so much to be a blessing to each one that's here. I ask you, Father, Wrap your arms around them right now. God, open their minds and their hearts and their understanding to what, Lord, you've laid on our heart to share with them. I pray, Father, 
God, hearts will be touched. I pray, Father, that we'll understand as never before the wonders of faith. I pray, Father, you'll meet every need. And God, that thy will will be done in every heart. I pray if there's one here that's lost, that today, Lord, they might be saved. God, that thy people might grow in faith and knowledge and grace and walk closer to you when they leave than they were when they come. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a great thing. What a great thing. Our faith in God is. Have you ever stopped and, and, and thought about it, folks? Listen. Without faith, you cannot be saved. You cannot be saved. I mean, yes, Jesus came and he went to the cross and he died for, for the sins of the world, for your sins and mine. And yes, he conquered death and hell and the grave when he rose again. And yes, beloved, he extends the invitation of salvation, beloved, to all. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, he says, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. He offers it to everyone. But despite all that Jesus did, beloved, listen, without faith, it's all to no avail. It's all to no avail. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life, Jesus said. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Ephesians 2 said, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, least any man should boast. It's by faith, Lord. It's by, uh, folks, it's by faith. Without faith, you cannot be saved. You can't be saved. Folks, faith in God's word, faith in Jesus' finished work on Calvary, faith in God, who, who he is and how he is, is essential to our salvation. But folks, faith is also essential as we live our lives on this earth. In our day-to-day -day living, Oh, listen, we must have faith. In other words, we, we don't just believe and trust God for salvation. Hey, we must also believe and trust God every day in every way for everything, for everything. In Hebrews 11, we have, beloved, the faith chapter of the Bible. It's a chapter, beloved, that, that points uh, I, points out the wonders of faith. And I'm talking about the whole chapter. The Lord, beloved, points out in this chapter great, great men and women of faith and how, beloved, by their faith they were delivered and they were blessed. Men, beloved, like Enoch, uh, Enoch men like Abraham, men like Noah and Isaac and Jacob and, and Moses and, and, and Daniel and David and, and even Rahab, beloved, how they were blessed and were delivered by faith. Read about these great men and women of faith and how faith blessed and delivered them. And we are all, beloved, at what faith in God can do. And well, we should be. But you know, I'm afraid, I'm afraid so many, beloved, get the wrong idea about faith. See, they think, if I have faith, then God will deliver me. No matter what, God will deliver me. And if I'm not delivered, it's because I don't have enough faith not that way true folks that's not true what did Jesus say you, you worried about how much faith you got let me tell you 
Jesus said, if you've got faith as a grain of mustard seed, that's small, friend. You can move mountains. You can move mountains. It's not, beloved, how big your faith is. So what's the truth? What's the truth about faith? I, I, I believe we see it, beloved, in the passage that we just read in Hebrews. The first thing I see, now I want y'all to follow me close. Beloved, I see that faith can deliver you from troubles and trials of this life. I see that. The Bible tells us with God, all things are possible. Y'all have been here for Sunday school. With God, all things are possible. And we see that all through the Bible, beloved. We see it over and over again. We see it in this chapter. Folks, God does for those who believes and trust in him. Amen? He does for them. Take Enoch, for example. Enoch, beloved, lived in a time of great, great evil. I mean, beloved, the world was changing in Enoch's day. And it was not changing for the better. Does that remind you of any time? How about now? How about now? You see, the Nephilim, beloved, the offspring of, of fallen angels and the daughters of men were taking over the world. They were taking it over. The seed of man was being corrupted. Evil and wickedness, beloved, was, 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 was prevalent wherever you look. And it was worldwide. And oh, how, beloved, it must have vexed Enoch's righteous heart. Folks, he didn't fit in anymore. He, he, he didn't belong on this world anymore. I remember my mama saying before she passed away, she said, the world's left me behind. She said, I don't belong here anymore. And that must have been how Enoch felt, beloved. He was a man of faith in God, and the world was rejecting God. Enoch knew it, beloved. He knew the world was headed for destruction. He knew it, and God knew it. And oh, how his heart, beloved, must have longed and, and, and yearned for, for the continual presence of God and the end of this evil. Well, God saw his heart. God saw what he yearned for. So because, beloved, he had faith and he lived by faith, listen, God just took him away. I don't mean he died. I mean, beloved, God translated him. God raptured him. Look at verse 5 in this chapter. It says it like this. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. One moment, beloved, he was there, and the next moment, whoo, he was gone. He was gone. God had delivered him from this wicked, evil world that, that, that uh, grieved his heart and soul. And you say, Preacher, that, that's incredible. Preacher, that, that's impossible. Yes, all things are possible with God. All things are possible. You know, a lot of folks think the rapture that we we are looking for is impossible. I got news for you. Brother, it's going to happen. All things are possible with God. Look at Moses. Moses believed and trusted God. He trusted God, beloved, so much that he stood against Pharaoh, the mightiest uh, man on earth, the most powerful man on earth. And he told that great king, God says, let my people go. Pharaoh refused. So what did God do? God sent ten plagues, 
terrible plagues on the land of Egypt, so beloved terrible that that uh, finally Pharaoh said, uh, recanted and he said, he, he said, I'll let them go. Well, they got to the Red Sea. And believe it or not, beloved, Pharaoh changed his mind because here he came with his chariots, his great army after the children of Israel. And there they were, beloved, pinned between that great army and the Red Sea, nowhere to go. And the people began to cry and to murmur against Moses. But Moses believed. He trusted God. He, I know it looked impossible, but he believed and trusted God. And Moses told those whining people, oh, you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he stretched out that rod. And beloved, there, that water of the Red Sea began to churn and beloved, he began to back up until there were two walls of water on every side and a pathway through that sea. And they passed through on dry land. You say, what about Pharaoh and his army? Oh, they stood in awe. But Pharaoh wasn't going to be beat, he didn't think. So he sends his troops into that that pathway, beloved, and as they're crossing that great sea, and the children of Israel stepped on dry land, on, stepped on the other side, guess what? The waters came down and destroyed them. They saw, beloved, their enemies defeated. God had delivered them because of the faith of Moses. Over and over again, we see God delivering his people because of their faith, doing the impossible. Somebody says, but preacher, what about today? I mean, you've given us these Bible uh, accounts, but what about today? Do we see God delivering those who believe and trust him today? Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Stand up, Martha. Turn around so they can see you. Y'all remember what Martha went through this past year? There is no doubt, no doubt in my mind when we were climbing that mountain, something happened to her heart. Ain't no doubt. I tried my best to get her to go to the doctor. She wouldn't go. Said she'd go when she got home. Got home, she wouldn't go. She lied. So, I said, okay. Done what I can do. So I just, you know, just whoop up on her. Then, then I'd have to re re uh, resign my church for beating the preacher's wife. But uh, she went a month. And then once in a while, she'd have these little flare-ups, little flare-ups. And I, like a loving husband, would say, I told you you ought to go. But I got an appointment. I got an appointment with Dr. Nelms. So she went to see Dr. Nelms when her appointment came due. A month had passed by. Dr. Nelms, she forgot to tell Dr. Nelms about what, was, what had happened. He was listening to her heart. And he said, Martha, you have any problem breathing? Oh, I forgot to tell you. And then she started telling him what had happened in the mountains. So, he did the EKG. He looked at that EKG, and his words to her were, Martha, you need to go see a heart specialist. Well, she'd already made an appointment the next week to see a heart specialist. He said, Martha, I, I, you may have had a mild heart attack. So she went to see the heart specialist. Heart specialist looking at the EKG. He said, I think you've got a blockage. You need to have a stress test. 
And to make a long story short, she got to have a stress test a week later. And the doctor, Dr. Chan, was so sure that something was wrong because she had this thing at the hospital, not his office. He was so sure that something was wrong that he made sure he was there when she had it. Wasn't supposed to be there, but he was there. Brother, she walked that. By the way, just, uh, uh, the Sunday before, the heart, uh, the, the uh, treadmill, these folks in this church got together around Martha, anointed her with oil. This is the most important part. And beloved, they prayed the prayer of faith over her. And she went to see that doctor and she walked that treadmill in the ground. And they did an EKG. Nothing. And they did an ultrasound. Nothing. And Dr. Chan said, I don't understand. I understand. We got a God, beloved, who can do the impossible. The impossible. And he did it for her. He did it for her. Oh, Miss Cobb. I remember Miss Cobb. You remember Miss Cobb? You do? Oh, Miss Cobb. Miss Cobb, they treated her for heart uh, for heart disease for years, for years. She came to me one day. Miss, Miss Cobb couldn't, couldn't talk plain. I don't know if it's because she didn't have no teeth or what. But she came up to me, preacher, I got to go to the doctor again this week. And, and preacher, I, 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 I want the church to, to, and the deacons to get around me and anoint me and pray for me. We did it. She went to that doctor this week because she was having a problem. She went to that doctor. She come back. Whoa! She was so happy. She was jumping up. Preacher, there's nothing wrong with my heart. The doctor said they treated her for years. There's nothing wrong with my heart. I'm going to tell you, all things are possible. If you believe, if you believe. Drugs? You know, people think drugs are more powerful than God. Let me tell you, beloved. I, I heard a man this Thursday, this past Thursday. This man was in the Hell's Angels. He was a member of the Hell's Angel, Angels motorcycle. And you know what all that involves. This man had tattoos all over his body. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you what he said. Beloved, he, he was so involved in drugs, he took a drug test. And this drug test was supposed to, to uh, identify 22 drugs, different drugs. He took a drug test. 17 of the 22 drugs was in this man's body. He was a wreck. He was a wreck. But beloved, he had a mama who loved him and who prayed for him and had faith in God. And to make a long story short, beloved, this man, listen, he got saved and now he's preaching the gospel. Fifteen years ago, Fifteen years he's been off drugs. Fifteen years. Oh, let me tell you. God delivers today. Amen? God delivers. Look, uh, look at Keith back on. Keith had cancer. But, beloved, he had something stronger than cancer. He had a faith in a God, beloved, that could heal. And he believed in that God, and beloved, he was healed. He was healed. And I could go on and on, but God, beloved, has, 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 has uh, uh, told us here in Hebrews 11 that faith, beloved, can deliver us from troubles and trials as we live this life. That's the good part. 
Y'all ready for the bad? But this scripture also tells us that faith doesn't always deliver you from troubles and trials. What? Preacher, I thought if I had faith, I was going to be delivered. Listen to me. God can deliver you. But faith, beloved, doesn't always deliver you from troubles and trials. Somebody says, Preacher, what kind of double talk is this? Folks, it's not double talk. It's Bible. It's Bible. Read what it says in our text. Beloved, in verse 32 through the first line of verse 35, it talks about all those who were delivered by faith. Oh, wonderful things happened. Oh, but in verse 35 through verse 38, it talks about those who had faith but were not delivered. Were not, it says, beloved, others were tortured were faced with cruel mockings. Others were tempted. Others were slain. Others were, 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 were killed with the, with the sword. Some were in prison, beloved, in bonds. Some were stoned. Some were sawed in two. Some, beloved, were de destitute and afflicted and tormented. And it goes on and on and on. Now, why? Didn't they have faith? Oh, verse 38 says they did. And he said, and all have, and they, these all having obtained a good report through faith. They all had faith. Didn't they trust God, preacher? Oh, yes, they did trust God. So why weren't they delivered from the troubles and the trials? Somebody says, oh, preacher, God must not love them as much as he loved the, those first ones he was talking about. That's why he didn't love them. Listen to me. God so loved the world. You know, that's you. That's everybody. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Folks, he gave his son to die for you and for everyone. You can't love any more than that. God loved them just like he loved the others. God loved those who weren't delivered just as much as he loved those that were delivered. Well, preacher, they must have, have had sin in their life. That's why God didn't deliver them, preacher. They had sin in their life. Folks, y'all remember when God delivered, Absal uh, delivered David from Absalom? Remember that? Folks, this was the same David that sin, that terrible sin with Bathsheba. This is the same one, beloved, same David that had a man murdered, killed. This is the same David, beloved, that tried to cover up his sin from men and from God. You think, beloved, these others sinned worse than David? No, no. It wasn't sin that caused God not to deliver them. God, beloved, looked at David's sin, but he still delivered him from Absalom. And as Christians, beloved, they would have confessed their sin. And if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Well, preacher, it must have been because they didn't have as much faith as those first ones. No, 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 no. Remember the mustard seed? Remember the mustard seed? Listen, we have, beloved, no indication that they had less faith than the first. In fact, beloved, they are listed in the hall of faith. They wouldn't be there if they didn't have a tremendous faith. 
So why didn't God deliver them as he did the first? Because, beloved, y'all ready for this? Because it wasn't God's will to deliver them. It wasn't God's will. Because God, beloved, could get more glory from their suffering than he could, beloved, from their deliverance. You say, preacher, what in the world are you saying? Now, I know this, beloved. This rubs against our, self, our self-righteous grain. I know it does. But it is true. It is true. But that's the problem, beloved. See, we think it's all about us. It's not. It's about God. Amen? It's all about God. Folks, God doesn't exist for us. We exist for Him. Listen, God doesn't serve us. We serve Him. Beloved, God doesn't live for us. We live for him. For him. Now God has promised, he has promised that all things, even the bad things, the terrible things, will work together for our good, beloved, if we love him. But he's going to get glory from our lives one way or another. He's going to get glory. And sometimes, sometimes that glory comes by us enduring bad things. Sometimes. Folks, Paul understood that. We don't understand it, but Paul did. Peter, beloved, was was in prison. Guess what? God delivered him. Amen? Y'all remember? Cell doors flew open. Hey, they were delivered. Paul, uh, Peter was delivered. Now, Paul was in prison. He was beheaded. He was beheaded. Did Peter, beloved, have more faith than Paul? No, no. But God used both situations for his glory. Peter, beloved, was delivered and he he led that Philippian jailer to the Lord and his family. Paul, beloved, when he was in prison and wasn't delivered, he wrote the prison epistles that so many, beloved, read and know and so many have been saved by today. You see, God, beloved, got glory for both. And God knew which way to get that glory. God was glorified. By the way, they chopped, (laughs) they come down, they laid uh, Paul's head on that block, and that great big burly guy with that, whatever he had on his head, raised that huge eye and come down on on Paul's neck. And beloved, Paul opened his eyes in glory, and there was his Jesus standing there with open arms to take it. So you see, beloved, they both won. Amen? They both won. Oh, you know, it, it, folks, it, listen to me. It takes more faith a greater faith to endure than to be delivered. Do you know that? It takes more faith to or a greater faith to endure the troubles and the trials of this life. It takes more faith than it does to be delivered from them. Those folks in verses 35 through 38, beloved, they showed their love and their faith and their trust in God more than those who were delivered. Were delivered. And oh, listen, the rewards that they got for being faithful, 
for being faithful to God till the end. Being faithful. Oh, listen, folks, faith can deliver you. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen? But faith does not always deliver us from troubles and trials. So what should we do? What should we do? We should have faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Y'all remember that? Beloved, they, King Nebuchadnezzar had built a golden image, had commanded everybody to bow down and worship it at the sound of music. And those three said, we won't do it. And Nebuchadnezzar called them in and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, I'm told that you won't bow to my golden image when the music plays. He said, if you will bow to my image, everything will be good with you. But if you don't, I will have you cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And I love these three guys. You talk about faith. Listen to what they said. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Our God is able. He's able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. But if not, let it be known unto thee that we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image. You know what they said? They said, our God is able. But if he doesn't, we will still believe and trust and serve and worship him. If he doesn't, we will endure. We will endure. You have faith like that? That's the kind of faith that always wins. Always wins. That's the wonders of faith. That God is able to deliver you if you believe. And the second wonder is he doesn't, faith doesn't always deliver us. Oh, but when we endure, God is glorified. I mean glorified. And when we stand before him, oh, what a day. What reward you're going to get because you endure. Every time you face trouble, you've got two choices. You can turn your back on God because you don't feel like God's being fair. I want you to know if you do that, you didn't have faith to start with. Right. Or you, beloved, can say, I trust my God. I have faith in Him. He can deliver me, but if not, devil, I'm still not going to bow down to your image. I'm still not going to follow. I want you to stand with me. His bow and eyes closed. The wonders of faith. Faith is such a wonderful thing. Such a wonderful thing. How's your faith? Do you have faith? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith. Are you saved? Or do you believe that Jesus died for you and rose again? And that he's, he, he offers you salvation because he died for your sin? Are you saved? then exercise that faith and come to Him and receive Him as your Lord and your Savior. He will change your life. He will change your life. Christian, you're going through a trouble and a trial. How's your faith? How's your faith? 
or you know someone that's going through a trouble and a trial and you need because you have faith you need to pray for them whatever the need whatever the need let God have his way in this invitation Heavenly Father there be one here that's lost God save that soul and Father I pray that we can see the wonders of faith that God if we have true real faith that Father we always win whether you deliver us or not we always win. Father, have your way. Glorify thy Son in Jesus Christ's name. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we invite you to come. We invite you to come.